Today I was reading the RC Founders Club phone app where we have conversations with other students and they share ideas, ask questions, they innovate. And one of the students is a guy named Juan and I thought it'd be really fun to make a video because he had a really good question. His question was, what do you guys think about cold approaching potential mentors? Well, let's answer that. I could talk about the finding of mentors for a very long time because I've had a ton of mentors. I mean, first of all, my father was a huge mentor because he used to stay up with me all night long studying for homework. Then I was just for score. And when I were, whenever I was driving, I was always a very curious child. So I was always asking questions. It wasn't just like a, a mentorship that existed for me like sitting at meetings. I was very fortunate to have a mentor in him. And then my mom would always mentor me in terms of art and creative stuff and stuff like that. But outside of that, outside of like the typical family structures, because some people have that, some people don't, there's always a way to find new potential mentors as opposed to them finding you, like you know, you're being born into a family. For me, when I was in college, I found a study group. And I kind of like created it myself. And within that study group, I just ran into people that were really good at academics. I usually just find them from the front row of the class for school. So I guess naturally, I was always trying to find those people who were positioned to help me out and be a part of whatever I needed to be a part of. So it was kind of like a little mastermind group. Now, not only was my study group such an important part of my life, it was also like my personal life. What I'd wanted to do when I was first learning how to pick up girls, improve my dating life, and go out and get success, was I was really just looking at random people that were really social at bars and clubs, or at the dorms, or even just in my classes when I was in university, and I'd invite them out for lunch. I'd say, hey man, you wanna go grab lunch or grab dinner? It's my treat. And hey, you wanna grab a drink, and what have you. And then what I would do is I'd just take them out and just really just drill them, ask them tons of questions. And I was just really interested in how they were getting their success, how they were getting their mindset. It wasn't like a formal structure. Because in every city, in every soul circle, there's always people that can help you out. On top of that, I was so curious about even what my purpose was in life that I didn't even know. So what I would do is I would literally open up the Yellow Pages phone book, because back in the day when I was in high school, this was when I was in high school, even before college, I was really curious about what my path was gonna be in life. So I'd open up the Yellow Pages phone book, and I'd do it online, and I'd just look up local people, which you can do now on Google, that were in particular jobs, and I'd just interview them. For example, I ran into uh, the Google listings, or not, what is now what was back then the Yellow Pages listings, and just looked up inventors. And I was like, you know what? What what is an inventor? You know, I see them on like Inspector Gadget, or I'd see them in like movies. But what do they actually do? So I would invite random inventors out for lunch, and I'd take them out to a nice lunch, and I'd spend a couple hours just finding out what they're doing, what their passions are, why they chose that job, and for investment bankers in New York City. A lot of this actually led to jobs, like internships. In terms of like my personal life though, it's been always really interesting to like find people that are really successful and really like innovative in terms of their thinking process. So when I found friends that had really good strategic strategies in terms of like uh, solving problems, personal problems, issues, and delve, dive deep into trying to find your underlying core beliefs and trying to understand who you are and what you were accomplishing and had a really good interpersonal skills. I just try to like find them to be like my own mentor. I mean, it's kind of like having a psychiatrist or a psychologist, you know, but just like a personal friend that you trust, someone you don't have to pay money to, and someone who's actually able to hang out with you in your personal life as opposed to a professional level. And that's the kind of friends I was really looking for most of my 20s. I was trying to find people that were really good at understanding other people's personal relationships, empathizing with them, and actually made my intelligent, trusted friends into those kind of people. And if you don't have those kind of people, find them. They're in everywhere. I mean, when you go to a new city, just trying to relate people, relate to people and ask people questions, you'll be surprised about what people will give to you as answers. I remember once I was dealing with a personal conflict. I was trying to resolve like how to deal with a, a really good friend of mine who has given me a lot of problems and I, I, I don't want to really go into specifics, but what I did was I just ran to random people at a bar and club I said, you know what, I, hear I want to get an outside perspective on something. Let me ask you a question. I was asking the bartender. I was asking random people around. And there weren't necessarily long-term mentors. It was just like answering my particular questions, getting outside perspectives. But those outside perspectives allowed me to kind of like come up with my own ideas and think outside the box. One of the reasons why I like formal education so much, 
where you have professors and structures of people that could really teach you, mentor you in that formal structure, is not because I believe that their ideas are better. It's just that they come up with ideas that have worked for a lot of people. And when you listen to those ideas, you come up with your own ideas. You just start thinking. For example, the idea of coming up with the RSD free tour was just from me listening to a professor who was talking about business organizations, how business organizations grow. And that's really all he said. He said, business organizations grow. I said, you know what, how do I grow? Well, I could grow by going to other cities. Maybe I should, how would I get people to come to my events? Well, I was offered for free. And just like, just random topics, because I wasn't thinking about growth. And another business professor who was talking about how you could have uh, celebrities that could come and they could give you advice. And I was like, you know what? I bet celebrity instructors giving advice to my instructors about business and sales would be a great idea. And I'm also doing it on the sales team. Maybe I should organize these people to come to my sales team and teach them. Maybe I should have them come to my instructors and teach them sales. And it wasn't that they were talking to me specifically, but these formal education structures where you have these large groups kind of give you all sorts of ideas that you don't typically think of, just some case studies. Now for me, I was in business school, so of course a lot of it was business ideas. And liberal arts education too, there's all sorts of random things that will inspire you. For example, just going to English and literature classes inspired me to be able to write more effectively in terms of emails and communicate my ideas. Or communication classes allow me to understand things from other people's perspectives. And nowadays there's so many books you could read. So a lot of people, like Goodwill Hunting, you had the main character just studying books. Reading from books is a great way to acquire knowledge as long as you're acting upon that knowledge and those actual insights will lead to more mastery, more success. In terms of like me, nowadays, a lot of my structures, a lot of my learning in terms of mentors has come from organized structures and systems from other people that kind of like filter you. For example, in much of my 20s, I was involved in organizations that were involving parties. For example, there's a group called Xeni that doesn't exist anymore where we had late night parties all night long. And from that group, we also shared social ideas about how to like optimize each other's social circles and ideas like how we were networking. And it also led to business mastermind groups. And I actually sought out particular business mastermind groups because from Xenia, I made friends that were involved with this party um, that was happening for their alcohol company. There's an alcohol company called Margarita King. It's the first margarita in a bottle, where as opposed to mixing margarita mix and mixing alcohol together and coming up with different flavors and then you know, having to mix it yourself, you just had a ball, you just pour it on ice, you drink it. And to promote themselves, they're in all sorts of media, like Oprah and what have you. But they also threw parties and they wanted their friends to be bartenders. They could have intelligent conversations with people about their alcohol. So I volunteered. So I went to the, um, a few parties, some of them in San Diego, some of them in LA. But the one in San Diego, I ended up meeting a bunch of entrepreneurs, just socializing. And I'm a really social guy, so I walked up to them and said, hey man, what's up? And I, let's have a drink. You want to try this uh, drink here? It's the Margarita King. You know, and I talked to them about how I volunteered, how I was a business person, I was visiting from LA, and I said, you know what? You know, there's a really interesting organization for other entrepreneurs called an entrepreneurs organization. Why don't you join it? All you have to do is make at least a million dollars a year, be the founder of your organization, own a majority of your company, and you can join this group. I qualified for all of those qualifications. And so I joined a local chapter in Los Angeles, got so involved, I even joined the board, and it got me on a global leadership scale to global, uh, globally network with people all over the place. When I was traveling around to India, or Australia, or Europe, or all over America, I would network with these people, not just in LA, but also around the world, and kind of built my network. I joined several other business organizations to do the same thing in my business life. And I noticed that even for people that are not entrepreneurs could have that same level network. For example, I took some time off to look into building a tech company. And when I was interested in doing that, it was in the hospitality industry. So I went to Cornell, I did a postdoc certificate program at Cornell, on hotel management. And I started joining hotel management groups with people who are in the travel business, people who are running hotels, managing hotels, and pretty much every profession, every occupata- occupation, there are little groups that you could join and you can make friends, network with people, they'll bring in speakers that can be like temporary mentors, and some of them, if you invite out, could be your long-term mentor. There's so many of these that they even have general ones for anyone from any kind of profession kind of mixing together. They even have general profession groups where you're basically just mixing on uh, just being a professional or, or having a common like, passion like wine. But it's interesting because you should be surprised about how intelligent people are in general. People who just get out of the house and do things. You can look up things like on going.com. You can look up for events or networking groups on groupon.com or look up at events and categories where you're passionate. For example, when I go to Hawaii, I might look up wine and food festivals in Hawaii. When I might go to Chicago, I might look up like cool like events, that, uh, philanthropy events that relate to like, uh, my particular interests. 
And these kind of things will involve people of similar mindsets. And when you go to people who have similar commonalities, similar mindsets, you'll develop those friendships. Because most mentorships are developed on friendships first. Of course, a lot of them you know, can be bought. You can find mentors as a service. There's a lot of gurus out there from everything, especially in the internet marketing world for internet marketers. So I did a lot of that. Or for business growth, because there's a lot of people on that. The thing is, what I like about mentoring and mentorship is I like it to be mostly from people that I trust from my social um, from my social circle, from my friends, because I've developed such a large, elaborate one. For you guys who might be developing kind of step by step, you might want to like buy a part of a membership. For example, like you could join the Hot Seat at Home tribe, you could join the RC Founders Club tribe. In each of our different communities, as opposed to being, say, just like a digital membership site where you just watch videos, you would go out and either watch them or you could download them, you could maybe uh, ask questions. but we want to have a situation where you can actually interact with other students, form your own accountability groups, ways where you can kind of, kind of like network and exchange phone numbers, exchange information, and, and do it not just with the guru, but with the guru and the other members have that similar goal, a similar mindset. I think Facebook groups are great for that. Facebook groups are great ways to find out cool events to go to. And I've joined a lot of events for video games, just because of my passion for video games. And even though I hadn't found mentors from that, I wasn't even looking for mentors from that, I found a lot of friends who had common interests and common goals. And from that, who knows who I might meet? I might meet people that are mentors. And I've done that from so many, so many years of experience of just trying to reach out to people from all these various activities to find mentors that can help me in my personal life, business life, and dating life. I think that you can very easily do the exact same thing just from following these very simple steps of going out there, reaching out to people that are in your soul circle or expand your soul circle and find those people, paying for mentors, randomly contacting people and just socially inviting them out. In fact, I had a friend who developed a massive network, which is probably the most powerful network on the planet called the Summit Series, where what he did is he invited all the fortune or um, what is it? I think it was called Forbes 40 under 40 or Forbes 100 under 40. Young entrepreneurs. Plus he invited, I think, he listed like the 100 most successful people on the planet that he could think of that he wanted to hang out with. I think it included uh, Bill Gates, Richard Branson, um, members of the Rothschild family that are highly successful in the business world. And he invited them out. Now he, he had some money to start off with. And what he did was he invited all these people out and said, hey, if you'd like to go skiing with me, I will buy you a first class ticket to go skiing with me. And I'm also inviting all the people who are in the Forbes under, uh, Forbes one, Forbes under 40, 100, um, and all these other people. I don't know who's going to say yes, but I thought it would be really fun just to network with really intelligent minds. And he had 40 people show up, and some of the most powerful people on the planet. And the next one made it a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger, and now they have a powerful network of people that want to live together on a mountain called Powder Mountain in Utah, which includes the most powerful people on the planet. And it's kind of like mauled after Yellowstone where they built a community of really powerful people, kind of like a country club. It's just that you own real estate, you live together, and you can share ideas and network. And that's, when you get to those elite levels, I mean, we're talking about going from like just inviting people to hang out with you over dinner to like building like a, a network full of millionaires and billionaires. There's those elite things that you can experience. And I experienced that from going through Summit Series as he was also a fan of uh, Tower's blog at the time, and then he became my bootcamp student. But I guess what's interesting is that there's so many different ways to do it, and you could start small, and you could really build it to a high level. All you have to do is get those field experiences and overcome the mindset of rejection, because there's a lot of people who won't want to do it, but don't be scared about it. There's also a lot of people who are kind of introverted. They don't want to step outside of their boundaries. In fact, a lot of my, my experience in life, I think maybe I'm introverted. I don't even know, because sometimes I would just want to spend a lot of time at home. And I didn't have, growing up, that natural social skills, that natural charisma of going out there and networking a lot of people. It's a skill I developed over time. Just because I want to be a leader, I didn't want to be left alone and left to the common constructs of society and following that governance. I wanted to always be outside the box and creatively thinking about new ways to go. So social experiment. Be willing to step out of your comfort zone. Be willing to try those new activities and reach out to new people. Don't be afraid of these people like uh, rejecting you or the fear of loss that might come from opportunity causes. Like if you reach out to a powerful person, the person could say no, but they can always say yes in the future. Don't worry about that. Just ask, just try. I mean, one of my students from the RC Founders Club, he wanted to hang out with me. He heard my uh, interview with Brandon Carter where I mentioned I was going to go to New York and hang out on a yacht full of other entrepreneurs. And he said, you know what? I thought I'd just ask. 
I remember hearing from an RC instructor, you should just ask. And he asked, and I said yes. And then we ended up hanging out for the next three days in New York City. Now, I don't have time to do that with everyone. At the same time, he was the only one you asked. And it's, you'll be so surprised, whether it's that hot girl that's walking down the street that you want to approach, or as that highly successful millionaire or billionaire. If you just ask, that, hey, would you like to participate in this really fun thing? Or, hey, there's a really cool idea I had. I'd love for you to like, hang out and get involved. Don't try to get things from them, like money, or try to pitch them for something. But do, if you could offer them an experience or something cool that you might have found that you recognized was something that you had access to, you'd, you'd be surprised how often people say yes. I say yes to things like that all the time. In fact, I had like a year or two, maybe even longer, I said yes to almost everything just because I wanted to get those experiences. I had people that would ask me out for dinner, maybe in the same night, to multiple dinners from different people from different areas of the city of LA. So I'd have like a little few bites of appetizers at one dinner and maybe some an entree at another and drinks at another with dessert. But I would say yes to everything and I'd spend a little bit of time with each group just to try to figure out the people that I want to interact with, the people I want to jive with, the people that could help lead me and guide me and maybe be a mentor. And then some of them would invite me to mastermind groups for business and my personal life. They understand me that I want to learn about business, so they invite me to business mastermind groups. But these are some of the really unique and interesting ways that really help my personal life. So if you could practice some of these things, if you want to invite people out, if you want to start your own groups, if you want to go to other people's groups, if you want to just invite random mentors to hang out with you socially, these things, surprisingly, are things that 99% of the world haven't even thought of doing. Some of these things they'll just do naturally, but I'm like doing all these things together, it's, it's a real huge payoff that you could get. And this is why a lot of people that you might hear in my interviews will say, Nick, you have the largest Rolodex I have ever heard of. I've never seen it. And it's because, not because I'm just a natural extrovert, it's because I put in the work. It takes a lot of work ethic. I treated my social life, my networking life like a true business. It was just like a business where the return is return on community, as my friend Tony Shea likes to call it. He's like, return on the value of getting people together to have collisions, connecting people, and having those innovative thoughts turn into like cool new entrepreneurial, free spirited ideas. And when you have that, that excitement that comes from that, that fun that comes from that, excites mentors, excites you. And by doing that, you'll have the two of you guys come together and hopefully come up with some cool ideas to lead you down the blueprint of your life and accomplish the goals that you want to accomplish. Well, Juan, I hope I answered your question. I know also you were asking about how LinkedIn can be a very useful networking tool in terms of like business and also any kind of mentorship. Now, yeah, I say that definitely is the case. A lot of people will find investors, friends, or contacts through that. Messaging people to hang out through LinkedIn is something that I've done as well to reconnect with old friends because almost everyone, if they're not on Facebook, if they're not on other social media for social purposes, will be on there for business purposes. And so if, yeah, if you message people and ask them to hang out, it's definitely a great way to do so. However, I wanted to let you guys know that this is something that I want to do on a regular basis. So if people are asking comments on my YouTube videos, if they're asking questions as a member of the RSD Founders Club, which we're all, I will give priority to RSD Founders Club members in terms of questions. So if you guys join RSD Founders Club and you ask questions in our Facebook group, or if you ask questions in our phone app, I will try to answer them in video format. I have a teleconference that I'm doing in RSD Founders Club, and that's going to be taking place later in the month of July. It's July 2016. I think it's going to take place, um, well, the dates are posted in RSD Founders Club. And also, I'm going to be having a live event where you can actually personally meet me and members of my mastermind group and actually ask me questions in person. So if you guys join the RSD Founders Club, you guys will have the chance to participate in that and also learn from me from over 10 hours of how we organize content. And I hope you guys check it out and also participate in asking questions for my YouTube channel because they help a lot in terms of me creating the content for the videos here. Thanks for checking out my video today. Please subscribe. It'll make me a very happy person. Click on the subscribe button right now. And if you subscribe to my channel, you'll hear about all the cool videos. In fact, although I have a regular video that's gonna be posted as a show every Monday, it's gonna be a Q&A show, I also will have one every Thursday as a mastermind interview. And if you guys want way more in-depth material, more in-depth interviews, uh, me delivering not just the questions, but the questions that I think are most important to me from the questions I've received from RSD Nation members that I've organized in a very organized curriculum, visit rsdfoundersclub.com. And then in that RSD Founders Club membership site, you'll have a chance to interact with me personally, members of my tribe, and get a lot of your questions answered directly.